Welcome. I'm Lee Cowan, and this is Here Comes the Sun, a closer look at some of the people, places, and things we bring you every weekend on Sunday morning. We start off with actor Ryan Reynolds, a leading man who's also a businessman, a comic who's also a superhero. But as our Tracy Smith found out, Reynolds is still finding himself in a way, both in life and his latest film. You go to Franklin Middle School, where you've been suspended two, maybe three times for fighting, which is ironic because you can't fight to save your life. Walking! Zip it! How do you know my dog's name? In the new Netflix film, The Adam Project, Ryan Reynolds is Adam Reed, a time-traveling fighter pilot from the future who crash lands back to Earth in 2022 and meets the person he spent years trying to outgrow, his 12-year-old self. 45-year-old Reynolds also produced the film, along with director Sean Levy. Your matchmaker was Hugh Jackman? Yeah. yeah. And uh, We met and on the dating site Hugh.com. That's right. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> But he told me, if I ever meet Ryan, and if I ever work with Ryan, we'll never stop. And then from the minute we first met on Free Guy, uh, it was gangbusters. Much more from their conversation coming up in just a few minutes. I, I, I wanted to get an earring with my friend Ross, and, and I, I, we got it done. And I walked home, and I, as I walked home, dread increased the whole time, thinking, like, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? My face is starting to get very hot. And uh, I sat, my brothers, before I'd gotten this, this uh, piercing, my brothers had sat me down and said, do not do this, dad will kill you. Like, he will kill you. He will turn you into a liquid and you will never be seen from again. So do not do this. And I was just like, at that age, I was like, screw you guys, I'm doing this. Then Rita Braver meets a teacher whose brand of educating can also be found on the walls of museums. Your work was selling. Your work was being acquired by some museums. Why did you keep teaching while you were still seriously painting? Teaching and working as an artist for me was like twofold. It one kind of fed into the other. I just enjoyed seeing people grow. And I was learning through the process as well. And I painted at night. I painted almost in every room of the house. <laughs> it's all ahead right here on Here Comes the Sun. The latest role for actor Ryan Reynolds has him facing his character's younger self, the kind of time travel that makes for some pretty interesting conversations, as does his conversation with our own Tracy Smith. I know that playing it cool wait, isn't really your thing, wait, never has wait, been in- Wait, how do you know my name? Have you ever wished you could go back in time for a do-over? You're Adam Reed, born February 10th, 2010. In the new Netflix film, The Adam Project, Ryan Reynolds is Adam Reed, a time-traveling fighter pilot from the future who crash lands back to Earth in 2022 and meets the person he spent years trying to outgrow, his 12-year-old self. You go to Franklin Middle School, where you've been suspended two, maybe three times for fighting, which is ironic because you can't fight to save your life. Walking! Zip it! How do you know my dog's name? Because I named him. Where are you going? He's actually in the scene, letting something go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's getting that opportunity he never had, you know? 45-year-old Reynolds also produced the film, along with director Sean Levy. For both, the story was irresistible. This idea of if you could go back and actually meet your inner child, actually meet the self you used to be, what would that be like for you? What would that be like for that kid? How old are you now? Twelve. In the movie, both versions of Adam get the chance to make peace with their long-lost dad, played by Mark Ruffalo. That my jacket looks a little tight on you, don't That's you think? That's what I said. Fine. You look like a condom with buttons. This is fun. I'm having fun, are you? For the real-life Reynolds, the notion of sorting out emotional baggage with one's father all hits very close to home. Reynolds is the youngest of four boys from Vancouver, Canada. Their dad was a former cop who ran a very tight ship. I don't want to paint this picture that it was this like horrible place to grow up, but it was very tense. And I just, because of your dad? Yeah, my dad was a very tense guy. And, you know, I used to sort of describe him as like a skin-covered landmine. 
I attribute some of the why I'm good at my job from that. I'm perceptive. I watch carefully for danger. <laughs> and, you know, as an adult, that can really come in handy. Can we be friends? Yeah. 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 Shake on it? Let's do that. Okay. Reynolds has been in more than three dozen films, and being a sensitive guy often made him a natural to play the sensitive guy, like in 2009's The Proposal, opposite Sandra Bullock. So, Margaret, marry me. Because I'd like to date you. But if rom-coms put Ryan Reynolds on the Hollywood map, this is what made him a global superstar. Fine! I only have 12 bullets, so you're gonna have to share. Let's count them down. Deadpool, with Reynolds as a disfigured superhero in a mask, was a monster hit. But only after it sat in limbo for years. You fought for more than a decade to get that movie made. Mm -hmm. What'd you tell yourself through those years? You know, it wasn't like I was whipping out a broadsword and heading up the, the hill to, to fight my way through the executives again. It was new uh, leadership would come in and I would go do the song and dance. But wasn't there a moment where you thought, okay, I'm gonna stop doing the song and dance? Like, this is just not gonna happen for me? Yeah, I think it was about a year and a half before we got the green light for the movie. But before he gave up completely, this test footage of the movie was leaked on the internet. Oh, hello there. I bet you're wondering why the red suit. Well, that's so bad guys can't see me bleed. Fans went crazy, and that helped convince film bosses to give Reynolds the go-ahead to make the real movie. Oh, hello. Deadpool 1 and 2 made more than 1.5 billion box office dollars, but Reynolds says that, like his character in the movies, his self-assurance is just an act. So you've talked about struggling with anxiety? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've had anxiety my whole life, really. And, um, you know, it's, there's a, I feel like I have two parts of my personality that one takes over when that happens. When I would go out on, like, Letterman back in the day, I would always be nervous. But I remember I'd be standing backstage before the curtain would open and I would, I would think to myself, I'm gonna die, I'm literally gonna die here. Or the curtain's gonna open and I'm just gonna be, <laughs> I'm just gonna be a symphony of vomit. Just like, <laughs> something horrible is gonna happen. But as soon as that curtain opens, and this happens in my work a lot too, it's like this little guy takes over and he's like, I got this, you're, you're cool. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ryan Reynolds. So Ryan, come on. I feel like my heart rate drop and my breathing calm and I just kind of go out and, and I'm this different person. And it's like I leave that interview going, God, I'd love to be that guy. Wow, I'd love to be that guy, that Ryan Reynolds guy. Sure, yeah, maybe no one else would, but I, I, I look at him like, that guy's, <laughs> guy's doing all right out there. Hey, it's Ryan Reynolds here with a deal from Mint Mobile to tell Seems you about Seems he's it. more than it's all so right. Besides his flourishing movie career, Reynolds also has stakes in businesses like a cell phone Richard? company. We can sew that up in post, guys. A gin maker, and a Welsh soccer team. And his recent film, Free Guy, was a huge hit. It was his first time working with director Sean Levy after a famous buddy insisted they meet. Your matchmaker was Hugh Jackman? Yeah. yeah. And uh, We met and on the dating site Hugh.com. That's right. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> But he told me, if I ever meet Ryan, and if I ever work with Ryan, we'll never stop. And then from the minute we first met on Free Guy, uh, it was gangbusters. They're actually neighbors in New York, and they have a few other things in common. Reynolds, with his wife, actress Blake Lively, has three daughters. Levy and his wife, Serena, have four. You said that you're coincidentally neighbors. You moved across the country, he didn't followed you? Me there, well, yeah. I'm never going to admit yeah. that I moved across the country to be closer to him. Uh, my rear view uh, mirror features Sean Levy. He just, but if I get a few great movies out of it, it's all worth it. Worth Who it. travels east, too? Like, you're like the opposite of the Donner Party, you guys, except you all made it. Um, Give us time. <laughs> yeah. How'd you get to be so smart? How'd you get to be so dumb? And while maybe he can't actually time travel, Ryan Reynolds has come a long way too. You mentioned that if your 12-year-old self could see you now, mm -hmm. what he would think. Do you give yourself a moment to step back and look at where you are? And if so, what do you think? Yeah, I think, I think my 12-year-old self would be proud of me because I do this thing in a way that 
uh, has some integrity, I, I, I like to think. Uh, that 12 year old would look at where I'm at and I'm, you know, we're doing all right, I think. Stick around for more excerpts of that chat coming up a little later in the show. But first, the bold strokes and vivid colors of Shirley Woodson. As a teacher, Shirley Woodson loved to teach others how to paint. As an artist, she found that she was learning from her students, too. Rita Braver traveled to Woodson's hometown of Detroit to celebrate a one-woman show long in the making. I listen to blues, I listen to jazz. Does what you're listening to influence what oh, you're definitely, painting? Definitely. A deeper color, a more brilliant color, that translation, that interpretation is part of what goes on. There's a lot going on in Shirley Woodson's paintings. Bold strokes and vivid colors are hallmarks of her style. When I saw your work, I thought, this is done by some wild woman. <laughs> she must be just out there. And then I meet this lovely school teacher. <laughs> What's going on? Well, um, I multitask. <laughs> and now this 85-year-old multitasker's work is being celebrated in her first one-woman show at her hometown museum, the Detroit Institute of Arts. So it must be exciting to walk in and see your work in this museum. Oh, it's incredible. The exhibit, composed of paintings that Woodson made over three decades, is called Shield of the Nile Reflections, which she says highlights the river's importance to civilization. I wanted to place these figures in an environment of healing, of restoration, of pleasure, all of the things that water represents. The paintings display some of Woodson's recurring themes, water, fish, shells, horses, and human beings, sometimes painted without facial features. I put the viewer to work to keep them imagining, just to say, well, why didn't she put a face in there? September Waves includes a small self-portrait of Woodson alongside her late husband, Edsel Reed, an art collector and curator. The two met after he saw one of her works. So did he want to meet you? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. And um, he bought a painting. The way of a woman's heart, right? <laughs> Absolutely, this woman's heart. <laughs> the couple had two sons. Woodson, who studied art at Wayne State University and the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, spent 26 years teaching art to both high school and college students. Your work was selling. Your work was being acquired by some museums. Why did you keep teaching while you were still seriously painting? Teaching and working as an artist for me was like twofold. One kind of fed into the other. I just enjoyed seeing people grow. And I was learning through the process as well. And I painted at night. I painted almost in every room of the house. <laughs> in fact, she says her paintings try to replicate the way we all juggle many things in our minds. You're thinking about what happened this morning. You're thinking about, you've got to pick the kids up, or you remember this. So all these things are going on. Compositionally, they keep the motion going. Woodson has won numerous local and national awards. Yet she believes that recognition has come slowly to her as well as to other women artists of color. Do you think it's been discrimination in a way? Oh, of course. On the one hand, it's so great that you have a solo exhibition at what is maybe the most prestigious art gallery in Detroit. On the other hand, what took them so long? Well, you're not the only ones. <laughs> <laughs> it's about survival. It's about keeping those goals that you have in play and uh, proceeding, moving forward. As promised, more from Ryan Reynolds right after the break.
once again, here's Tracy Smith and Brian Reynolds. Can you can oh, you share yeah. that story? You wanted to get an earring when you were 13 yeah, years my, old? My, yeah, I, I, I wanted to get an earring with my friend Ross, and, and I, I we got it done, and I walked home, and I, as I walked home, dread increased the whole time, thinking like, what am I doing, what am I doing, what am I doing? My face is starting to get very hot. And uh, I sat, my brothers, before I'd gotten this, this uh, piercing, my brothers had sat me down and said, do not do this, dad will kill you. Like, he will kill you, he will turn you into a liquid, and you will never be seen from again. So do not do this, and I was just like, at that age, I was like, screw you guys, I'm doing this, because I'm a grown, not pubescent adult. Uh, and I just went and did it. And um, uh, I got to the table, and dinner was, you know, on the table, and I could feel that, like, vice grip of silence that my dad uh, was very good at energy in the room. He could just, like, tighten that, that grip on you by saying nothing. And uh, I knew he was looking at me, and I could feel him burning a hole uh, through my head. And then I felt his gaze kind of drift over my brother's. And I sort of finally, you know, got the will and the nerve to look up. And I looked up, and my three brothers all had an earring in. And they all did that to sort of mitigate my ass kicking that I was going to get. So I, it was one of those, like, moments that you can't can even write that. It was just, you know. It's beautiful. Yeah, and it sort of, it diffused the situation in a big way. And it, it actually got some chuckles after a while, too. Your uh, dad actually laughed? Yeah. Yeah. How can you not be proud of your kids if they do that? I mean, that's a, I don't know. It's a pretty amazing. great thing. Yeah. You told me before that you felt like, in a way, you canonized your mom and demonized your dad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and realizing that made you confront some things about yourself that you hadn't before. Yeah, you know, you tell stories to kind of pave over your own inadequacies sometimes. You know, I, I, I would tell myself stories about him that, you know, really kind of focused on maybe the moments he wouldn't be as proud of, you know, but somewhere between supervillain and superhero was the man that was my father. You know, and, then, and he, that was what he was. He was just a man doing the best he could. And I have a lot more empathy for that now than I did then. And I, I just found myself, my mind wandering constantly about those relationships that I had when I was young with my dad and, and, and with my mom and then losing my dad. And like, why did my relationship with my dad actually somehow get worse after he died? I realized that I was mad at my dad because he died, not because he'd done anything wrong or anything. I just was mad at him because it was easier to be mad at him because he died than it was to be sad about it. Well, that's what I was just gonna ask you is, you know, in the Adam Project, Adam gets closure with his dad in a way. Yeah. Did you get that with your dad? I tried to get closure with my dad. I did get to see him and I just like started going in there and just like thanking him for like the most sort of banal Weird, you know, thanks for uh, making sure we had clothes. Thanks for, you know, coming to my football games. Or thanks for, you know, always making sure we have food. You know, like, because you know, we didn't have much growing up, but we had enough. And, and I realized that, you know, sometimes uh, providing enough is very hard for people. <laughs> and I know that wasn't easy for my dad with four boys. So I wasn't looking for kind of closure or anything. I was just looking to say this. I, want, I, I had a feeling that that might be the last time I see him, and I just wanted to sort of make it about that. Um, you said after you wrapped Spirited that you were going to take a sabbatical mm -hmm. for a while from acting. Why? Um, I just, I, I, people confuse the sabbatical with like I'm taking just, I'm taking time off. I, I'm stopping shooting films for a while. Um, and that doesn't mean forever, it just means like a year, you know? year goes by pretty quickly, but it, it also means I just get to be home and work from home and walk my kids to school and pick my kids up from school and, um, and just be there when they lose teeth and all those other things that you never want to miss when you're you know, overseas shooting movies and stuff like that. So uh, I've been really lucky that when Blake shoots a film, I don't shoot a film. Uh, and we all travel together. Uh, and then when I shoot a film, she doesn't shoot a film and we all stay together as well. But uh, um, it's harder when your kids are growing up, you know. So we just want to keep the family together. And I recognize the obscene privilege it is to be able to make a decision like that, you know, because there are so many people who just 
absolutely that's not within their means or ability to do that. So yes, um, your your wife and you troll each other relentlessly. I don't know if it's relentless. <laughs> it's, yeah, I mean, there's no, I don't, you know, I, I don't think anybody wants to see some lovey-dovey proclamations of whatever on you know social media. That's for behind closed doors. Um, did you yeah. start this? Did she start this? Uh, I don't know. She's always kind of had that super acerbic aspect of her. But yeah, we have, I don't know, we have, we've always sort of had a relationship that's kind of predicated on kicking each other's ass a little bit. And it works. It's just, yeah, we, we have fun with it. I mean, it's, you know, I don't know. It's also an expression of, I think, of safety, too, in, in a relationship as well. If you can kind of have fun with each other that way, then, you know, chances are you guys are probably good friends. I mean, at the end of the day, that's really what works is, yeah, I love her, but I like her, you know, and I, like, I really like her. So it's, that's, that's, I think, what really helps us. That's like huge. Each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Mm. She did do a very sweet Valentine's post, no joke. She did. Um, I was a little soft focus back there, but yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lee Cowan. We'll see you here next time on Here Comes the Sun.